Hello, my dear creatives, it's Olga Sarakina here, and welcome to another tutorial on my YouTube channel. This is actually a fragment, a short fragment from my new online course on vertical for interior designers. And if you are interested in this topic, you can check out more on my website. And now let's draw together this beautiful Rococo revival chair. Let's begin. I will be using the same sketchbook with my marker sketch on the front page and the paper here is watercolor paper so if you don't have a watercolor sketchbook you can simply take a piece of watercolor paper and for this part we will need also a pencil and an eraser. Alright so we begin with basic composition and proportions. First Let's define how much space our object will take on a piece of paper. Please allow plenty of space around it. So now with the basic proportions. Please straighten your arm, straighten the elbow, one long line, squeeze one eye and measure with your pencil the proportion, for example, the width of the chair to its height and it will be approximately the rectangular with the height twice as long as the width of the chair. Next, let's measure another important construct, the construction part. It's this side from the corner of the chair till its uh, side, till its back. It will be a proportion of one, two, three. So it will take the entire chair as four. So this side, it will take one of four pieces and the rest of it, it will be three. Like on the scheme that I've prepared for you. Next, we'll work with our vanishing points and perspective. This chair, we can see the corner, right? It's looking at us. We can see one side of the chair as well as the other side it's not on the frontal view or side view we can see both sides this is my favorite type of perspective it's a two-point perspective i really hope my dear creative that you are enrolled in my perspective drawing challenge or maybe you are an enrolled student in my online course base and interior sketching with markers because they i dive dive really deeply into perspective basics the rules of perspective because in both of these courses i mean perspective drawing challenge and my course base you will find really deep constructive knowledge on how to build perspective all the rules of it uh, because in my watercolor course in this one i'm focusing more on the watercolor technique Okay, meanwhile, we've done quite a lot, so I want to go over it one more time. So we have this upper plane, the seating area of the chair, and what we want to do is to draw inside of it like a nice little curve. But it's not that uh, simple as it may look from the first glance, because it's not just a regular rectangular shape but it's a trapezium actually because if we look from the top of this chair we'll see that the back part it's much more narrow that's why here we have perspective conjunction as well as this conjunction of the form that's why this curve will look really dynamic Okay, now let's give some thickness to this seating area. So it takes approximately one third of the height. I mean, the height from floor till the top plane of the seating area. So we can divide it into three equal parts and then also show this wooden part of the chair. It's time to define the back legs for this chair. Please take a closer look because these legs, they're slightly curved, like in entire Rococo style, you can hardly find, find any straight line because this style is all about sinuous lines, curves, wave-like lines. Please give some thickness to these legs and now onto the upper part of the chair. 
Here we think trapezium shape first. Let's define the borders of this inverted trapezium with the wider part on the top. This line indicates, will help us to indicate this widest part of the curves. And this top uh, curve is the top part plus uh, on the very, very top there will be some decoration. That's good. I'm pretty satisfied with the construction for the uh, our future decoration of this back of the chair. Now on to the legs. It's really important for decorative that we make our drawing in such a way that we do not like focus on one particular part and finish it to the finest details and then we switch to the second part because this will lead only to very separated impression of the drawing it will be not unite so the way i teach is to go from big forms to the smaller details and to focus on the big form first that's why we focus on the construction in general and then construction of each of the parts of the object and then um, slowly go into details all right so we are drawing now the legs and these beautiful curves when we are done with them we are going back again to the upper part of the chair to add even more details like for example this wooden part which basically duplicates the um, uh, outline of the chair that we've just done. Another important note that this construction part, as I call it, it's very, very handy, especially when you notice some mistakes. It's really easy to change something to your drawing. For example, here, I can see that this upper part of the chair, it should be closer to the right side of the paper and the bottom the back right leg it should be a bit closer to the center line of the chair that's why i do these um, minor changes i introduce them and my chair starts looking closer to the origin to this reference photo remember i've mentioned that in rococo style there are no straight lines, so it's really, really hard to find them. Take a look at the sitting part of the chair, even it is curved. Rococo and Rococo revival styles, they are both uh, based on convex and concave curves. If we take a look at the layout of this chair, it looks like this. So we have this part let me zoom it a little bit so you see it looks like a wave right and we want to reflect it you can show also this lovely fanciful decoration to the corners of the legs so we can define them a little bit more the entire rococo style actually it is so characterized by intricate decoration, these beautiful naturalistic motifs. And now let's define one of them. So we do diagonals, we draw diagonal lines in this plane. So we take this part of the seating, we find where the diagonals intersect, and this will be our center line. This is the way to quickly understand how the center line of any object will look in perspective we continue fine-tuning these beautiful curved legs please take a closer look the front right leg we can see it more in front so we can see both sides of it remember it's a two-point perspective so we can see both sides of the object and the front left leg of the chair uh, we uh, look at it more from the side so we can see its beautiful profile view as well as a little bit of the inside of the leg that happens because again all these lines all these curves um, they are multi-dimensional so these are not like regular chairs legs which are like straight and we can see the boxes exactly as we are approaching 
the final of this part of the tutorial. We can show drop shadows from these legs. I really love how the artist showed them here, presented this shadow in a very artistic way, in my opinion. And finally, we can add even more details to this beautiful upper part of the chair. You can see that entire uh, back of the chair, it's an, uh, actually concaved. That's why we will show again this silhouette, this outline. Uh, plus, if you will look closer, these wooden elements, uh, they also have particular structure, even though I know that Rococo style might look very irregular, chaotic, like all over the place. And from the first glance, it might look like it's impossible to draw it because it's so complex, but it's actually not. If you just take a closer look, uh, if you understand the structure. And I remember back uh, in the years of my studying at the Art Academy in St. Petersburg, Russia, I really enjoyed these uh, lectures from the history of art on this particular style. Here you can enjoy some beautiful drawings of the interiors in Rococo style that I found for you on internet, also some pieces of furniture. And here is actually one of the origins of Rococo. It comes from um, Rokai and Coquillage, two French words, the name Rococo, which mean Rokai means this shell covered rock work which used to decorate artificial grottoes and coquillage means this shell motif, like this, for example, that I found for you. If you enjoyed Media Creative, this part of the lesson, check out the entire program of my new course on watercolor drawing for interior designers. Check the link in the description.